see it played. Uh, this is John Southard's Drive on Frankfurt War Game. Came out in issue number one of Counter Attack magazine. The shortest route uh, for a Soviet offensive to the Rhine River lies between the East German border and the city of Frankfurt. A successful offensive through this area, the famous Fulda Gap, would cut West Germany in half, threaten the vital Ruhr area, and place the rich Frankfurt, Mainz, Darmstadt triangle under Soviet control. If NATO is to win, the U.S. and West German armies must win here. Should war come, both sides anticipate extremely mobile, fast-moving battles. Drive on Frankfurt emphasizes mobile warfare and the need to synchronize various types of highly specialized units. The player who more effectively combines combat support and electronic warfare, EW, units at critical times and places will win. Okay, it's the NATO impulse, but uh, before we get to that, uh, real, real quick, down and dirty, where we are, what's happening. First, this is the first turn. Uh, this is West Germany over here. So this direction is north. That's north. Um, uh, that's Fulda. Um, this over here is the East German border. Uh, these are the t first two Soviet uh, divisions that have crossed the border. Um, da, let's see, Frankfurt is off the screen about a dozen hexes that way. Um, Marburg. This is uh, Kassel up here. And um, some other landmarks. Um, hmm. Okay, I was de delaying too long. There's Frankfurt. <clears throat> All these um, urban urban areas, urban hexes. Um, we get to those symbols later when they come up when they when it matters. This is the Rhine River. Um, so what do we have here? We've got, uh, uh, here's a headquarters unit. So for those white striped units there, this is the, I turned off the autofocus. This is the third armor division. This is the third armor division. Um, so just I'll take both of these. Um, so we've got uh, mechanized infantry battalion and armor battalion. Again, we'll get to those values when it matters. Um, so they are basically set up in their normal uh, garrison areas, I guess you could say. Um, um, I should say, or I will say, the one thing I will say is that I'll grab this mechanized infantry battalion again there. The numbers on the front, you see 445. When this unit is done activating, and it will, well, actually there are two different ways to activate, but it could activate as part of the 3rd Armored Division formation activation, or separately as part of a general activation. But when it's, when it's done, it's going to be flipped over. And so only its defensive factor is showing. Um, so gone is its movement factor because it can't move again this turn, and gone is its attack factor because it can't attack again this this turn. So I only mention that because as the NATO player scans the map, Third Armor Division is still available right now for activation, um, and you know that because they're not flipped over. These ones without a stripe are basically your um, higher level assets. Um, they're, they're just, they're not assigned to a formation. Um, so that's why they don't have a identification stripe. And over on the other side of the map, we've got this orange formation. This is, uh, this is West German, obviously. West German um, formation there. It is actually the, it is, hmm, it is the, Oh, there it is. The 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division. 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division. 
Oh, okay, and the yellow one is two. Okay, the yellow one here is second Panzer Grenadier Division as well. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that formation up there as we go forward to the Soviets there on the west side of the border now. Um, okay, so the question asked at this point early in the game, first turn. Um, oh, and here again is uh, that unit has already activated this turn. These units are flipped over to their backside, only showing their defensive um, rating, their defensive strength. So again, scanning the map, you would know they're done for the turn, whereas they, they are still available. Um, so I guess the question at this point is, uh, are there any first turn limitations on movement for any NATO forces? Okay, it is a NATO impulse, so we'll just start with that first. Or what are the elements of, it, of an impulse? So um, a NATO impulse, let's see if they're different. Um, um, hmm. I don't see a big difference. Anyways, they call it a NATO impulse. Okay. The NATO player declares the type of impulse and then conducts it. So we're going to declare our type and then conduct it. Um, before activating each unit, check whether its formation is jammed or its headquarters disrupted. So we have formation jam jamming and we have headquarters disruption. So back to impulse declaration. There are three types. One is pass, do nothing. So I'll set that aside. That's kind of obvious one. Otherwise, there's a general uh, activation and a formation activation. I'm going to go in order here, and we're going to do the a general activation first. Um, but one of the reasons why I'm doing that is I'm looking at this unit here, uh, this trail mechanized infantry here. Um, it's... Um, this far back, separated from the rest of its formation, I look and say, "Hey, I want to move him up." Um, he would not. I don't think that he would be, you know, allowed to be part of a formation activation. So, I'll use this general activation to get him up, and then I'll look at two other. Well, actually, I'll go back and say, uh, "So this is a general impulse." Uh, any, th any three ground units can, can be activated. Any number of helicopters may fly. Back to helicopters up here. Helicopters. Um, so any number of helicopters may fly and uh, any number of airstrikes may be called. Units need not be in command to be activated in a general impulse. In fact, units that are out of command may be activated only in general impulses. Okay. So maybe it makes sense to talk about uh, command. So to move normally, a formation unit must be in command at the beginning of its impulse of activation. Um, so let's say that that unit were to, let's say that that West German uh, headquarters did activate as a formation activation. Uh, a formation unit is in command if located within four hexes or radio contact distance of its formation superior headquarters. The four hex path may be traced through any train or units. Here's the headquarters, one, two, three, four. So it is outside the radius. Um, okay, if, uh, if the formation is formation jammed or the formation's headquarters is, is disrupted, Okay, we have some effects that are what? Okay, there are some, some penalties there. In a formation impulse, a higher echelon unit is in command if located within four hexes of the chosen formation's headquarters. Okay, the higher echelon, what they call a higher echelon unit are the units that I already mentioned that don't have a, that don't have a stripe. So that's a formation unit. Uh, this is a higher formation unit or higher echelon unit. So if this were a formation impulse, a higher echelon um, unit is in command if located within four. So if I activated this West German headquarters, one, two, three, that higher echelon unit could be activated in command 
because it's located within four hexes, four hexes of the chosen headquarters.